on, grab your Bible. Grab your Bible. Grab your study notes. Let's dive into the word. Lord, we got something you want to deposit in the house tonight. We're going back to the book of Daniel. It's not on your study notes. It's not on your study notes, but that's why you got to bring, bring you something. You got the Bible on it. I'm an old school guy. I still, I still like my Bible. I still like these leaves. Um, I, ain't trying to, I ain't trying to put you out if you don't. You know, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, but, but it's going to be on the screen. Uh, we're going to the prophet Daniel. The prophet Daniel, uh, chapter 11. Daniel, chapter 11. Uh, one verse of scripture from the Amplified, verse 32. We're going to springboard from this verse um, tonight. Uh, Daniel, uh, chapter 11, verse 32, and just a portion of the scripture that I want. But they... Uh, but the people, that's, I'm used to King James, if I get, but they, <laughs> did anybody see the word they? It's not there. I'm going off of memory, okay? But the people who know their God shall prove themselves what? Strong and shall stand firm and do exploits for God. Somebody ought to say amen to the word of the Lord. But the, but the people who know their God shall prove themselves strong. And shall stand firm and do exploits for God. I love when the English Standard Version says, but the people who know their God shall stand firm and take action. Shall take action. Shall take action. So this is the final installment of our Woke Church series, part seven. Uh, it is simply God is. God is. God is. God is. Father, we thank you for your word. We ask you to bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, we pray you've been walking with us through this series. This has probably been one of, one of the one of those staple type series in, in our ministry. Every now and then we'll 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 embark on something. Every now and then we'll we'll dive into something, and I believe it transitions our ministry from one particular place to another place. And I believe that this particular series is that because it's just been speaking. Uh, to the culture. It's been really speaking to what it is that's been going on in our society and going on in our world. And, and it's been my intent. It's been my endeavor for these last several weeks uh, for us to be a woke church, not to be naive, not to be in mental slavery, uh, but for us to know what it is that's going on in our society, what's going on in this world, and we could be able to be like the children or the sons of Issachar. The Bible says the sons of Issachar, they understood the times and they knew what they should do. And I believe that that is a heavy indictment on the people of God, that where we love to come to church, um, we love good messages, we love good word. Uh, you can sit right in your home and, and you can listen to all your favorite preachers. Uh, you don't have to listen to them a, a, a replay. You can literally be right live in their service. All your favorite preachers, all your favorite worship, all your favorite bands, whomever it is. Uh, we got access to everything uh, around the world. But yet and still, the indictment on the local church today is that we are biblically illiterate when it comes to uh, the things of God. Maybe, maybe that description doesn't fit you, and I'm glad that it doesn't. I'm glad you're a Bible thumping your biblis, uh, but for the other 99% of the body of Christ, uh, we can tell you about the Bible. We can't tell you about the author of the Bible. Amen. We know, we, we know, we know what the Bible says, but do we know what the Bible means? Uh, come on, we, we, can, we can talk about the word. We can talk about this and talk about that. But when we begin to engage people who don't believe like us and people who don't trust God like us and people who don't believe in what it is that we're doing, oftentimes we're left in the fork of the road. And this is the society and the day and time that we're living in. And this is the postmodern society that I've been talking about these last several weeks because the post the, the postmodern society says that the church is asleep. Uh, but I don't know about you. Um, I'm, I'm woke. I'm alive to the things of God. I know what I believe and not just I know what I believe, I know why I believe what I believe. I just don't believe something because my preacher told me. I just don't believe something because this is what my mama them said. But no, I believe this because number one, I've experienced God for myself and then also I can go to the script. I can go to the word of God and God has proven, God has proven his word. So this is what we've been talking about these last several weeks. You know, I'm going to back up just a little bit and then spring forward so you can be able to catch up with us on what it is that we're talking about. We, the, the society that we're up against, the society that we're literally living in right now is called postmodernism. Postmodernism. You ought to say that postmodernism. It's not pastor's attempt for you to learn um, all these terms as it relates to memorizing them, but I want you to be able to recognize them. If you can't, if you don't uh, commit it to memory, I at least want you to be able to recognize the spirit of the day. So when you're watching your favorite television show, when you're listening to your favorite radio show, when you're scrolling on social media, you'll be able to say that this is postmodernism at its best. What, what does this mean? There's, it means no meta narrative. There's no big picture. There's no creator. There's no 
no rhyme or reason to life. It is just simply what it is. And there's a lot of people that believe that. They say that there's no purpose for us being here. There was just a big bang, just a big explosion, and we just was here. We just evolved out of the ocean, and there's no great creator. When I'm dead, it's done. It's over. I'm not going to have to stand before no creator because they believe there is no creator. Uh, this is the postmodern society. A lot of our politicians believe this. A lot of the people that we work with believe this. A lot of people in your family believe this. Even if they don't articulate it with this term, this is the nature and this is the spirit of the age. We must understand that we're dealing with a postmodern society. That's why we need to be woke because we just can't listen to what everybody's saying. We need to understand and know God for ourselves, for ourselves. There's another term I gave you called nihilism. Nihilism is just simply, it, it means what it sounds like. It's just trying to annihilate the foundation, trying to annihilate. What, what is it? It's a, a viewpoint that traditional values and beliefs are unfounded. Um, I, I told you about how you can be in a Christian environment. I can tell you that there's some things that we're supposed to do and some ways that we're supposed to carry ourselves as believers, and people will tell you that that's, that's, that's traditional view. That's a traditional thought. Don't nobody give God no dime out of every dollar. I, I, I give to the United Way. I give to the Children's Miracle Network. I give to this and the, the Salvation Army. All those are good causes. You should, come on, you should give to them, but you shouldn't tithe to them. Come on here, somebody. But, but people tell you that that's old fogey. That's just traditional view. We, we've lost a traditional view of marriage. We've, we've gotten so grown. Now, Grandma say you ain't got a little too big for your britches. Come on here. Uh, you got a little too big for you, but we've gotten so grown now that we're marriage is no longer between a male and a female female marriage is between who you love if you feel like you're a girl and you're a boy you can be a girl if you feel like you're a boy and you're and you're a girl and you can just be who you want to be this is called nihilism and once again we may not remember this you may not be able to coin this term but when you see it when you hear it you'll be able to say oh no I can rec I recognize that I know exactly what's going on another term just just review y'all should have been here go back and look at it just review I can't re-preach it all come on look subject the relativism it's just simply the concept that everybody just does what is right in their own eyes. Lord have mercy. Isn't that, isn't that our society? Everybody, everybody in the club. Getting this, this, is the, this is the nature of our society. Everybody do what's right. You do you. That's what we say. You live, you live your truth. You live your truth, I'm going to live my truth. You just do you. So once again, you may not be able to say, girl, that's subjective relativism. No, you may not be able to say that, but you'll be able to say that's not God. That's the point. You, when, when you start hearing people, come on, have you ever been there before? I've asked y'all this before. Have you ever been sitting in the service and and hearing somebody teach and preach, I pray it's not been one of my services when I've been teaching and preach. And, and somebody have said something, and you say, mm -mm, I, Now, I don't know chapter and verse, but that ain't right. Come on, anybody ever been there before? Anybody ever say, Nah, I, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you you wrong, bro, preacher, because I can't, I can't confound you. I can't go in that word and refute what you say. But that anybody ever had a, a, a radar go off? Say, do, 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 do. I don't know about all that now. And then see, this is when you hear these types of things and the spirit behind these things, you'll be able to say, No. That's that's not God. That's not how God works. You don't just get to do what you want to do. The Bible says if you take a note, you ought to write this verse of scripture down. Proverbs 14, 12 and Proverbs 16, 25. Proverbs 14, 12 and Proverbs 16, 25. It says there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So you can do what you want to do, but it's going to have a price. You can. I love this. You can make your own decision, but you can't pick your consequences. You can make your, you can make your, you, you, you're a big boy, you're a big girl. Go make your, make your own decision, but you don't get the opportunity to choose your consequences. And that is, that's what subjective relativism is. You just get to do what you want to do. Subjectivism, it is the doctrine that knowledge is merely subjective. I gave y'all all this last week. Just go back to your, your notes from last week here. The, the, the doctrine that knowledge is merely subjective, that there's no external or objective truth. Man, if I had a dollar for every time I've heard someone say that there's no absolute truth, <laughs> man, we'll be a multimillionaire because this is, this is how people live. They say there's no absolute truth. How arrogant are you to tell me that I'm wrong? How arrogant are you to tell me that what I feel and what I want to do is wrong? It's not me. It's not us. Come on. It's God's word that tells us what objective truth is. Relativism, another term, relativism, just backing up. It says the doctrine that knowledge, truth, and morality exists in relation, here, this is so good and so key, to culture, society, 
or historical context and are no or, or are not absolute. So, so what they, they, they dumb a truth down to say that it's only relative to the culture, only relative to your society or the historical context. In other words, it may have been true then, but it's not true now. It, it, it may have been true. And the only reason why you believe that is because your preacher told you this. The only reason why you believe that because of how she was born in. And, but no, truth is the truth. It's true in, if it's true in Jacksonville, Florida, it's true in Maine. If it's true in Maine, it's true in Portland, Oregon. If it's true in Portland, Oregon, it's true in Arizona. It's true in Zimbabwe. It's true in Alaska. Truth is truth. And we must understand that. And truth does not meander and change its phase and change its structure based on the person or the context the truth is the truth and whenever it is the truth when you deal with somebody like this and they and they and they saying no that's my truth then that's your truth here this is the last term this is truthiness truthiness now you ought to remember this one now if you don't remember uh, subjective relativism and and postmodern society you ought to remember truth in it isn't that an easy one truth in it what, what does truthiness mean truthiness mean uh, I, I see your point I know I'm wrong, but I'm going to believe what I want to believe anyway. <laughs> That's what truth in this is. Truth in this is there's no truth in what I'm saying. There, there's, no, there's, no, there's no, I, 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 nothing to stand on. The, the, the theologians call it the, the, the coyote principle, Wiley Coyote. Anybody remember Wiley Coyote? Wiley Coyote, he spent his whole life trying to get after who? The road runner. He he go and buy all this stuff from Acme and look at all these instructions and, and get all this stuff together. And his only thing he wanted to do is to take why to take the take that road runner out. And here, this is what happens when a person that's dealing in truth in it, they they operating in their wily coyote anointing. You know what, what what does that mean? Because oftentimes, especially when he's chasing, he behind the road runner, behind the road, he's hot on his trail. All of a sudden they'll bend the corner, the road runner go this way, and he go and he like. He just suspended in there. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Y'all don't watch TV. I said, and 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 when he's suspended in there, what's under him? No, he's supported by nothing, and that's how a person that stands in truth in it, they're support, they just out there suspended in air, and it's only a matter of time that they finally figure out. Say. Y'all don't know nothing about it. Anyway, look here. If, if this preaching thing don't work, I promise I can go work at, work somewhere else and, and be like make sound effects and stuff and be like a comedian or something. I don't know. But anyway, that's what that, that, that's what that, that, that's what a person because here they have no they have no stability. There's nothing for them to stand on. But you and I, we're never gonna be left out without a foundation because what I'm standing on, I'm standing on the word of God. Come on here. I heard somebody say, My hope is built. Oh, 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 nothing left. Hell yeah, know about that. Anyway, <laughs> now I don't about that. Anyway, look, truth in this. So, so, so because of this society that we're living in, because, look at the musician coming. Oh, it's my turn. Is he, he's singing. It's my turn to come in. And I'm not finished. I'm going to sing. Look, so, so <laughs> but because of this society that we live in, <laughs> we have to know God for ourselves. And th th this, is why, this, is why, this is why pastor's going through this. This is why pastor's talking about this. Uh, Daniel said, the people who know their God shall do what? Stand Firm. I should stand firm. I won't let every little thing throw me off. I won't get distracted by all the noise in the world. I'll know God for myself. I'll stand firm and I'll take action. So here, this is what our endeavor should be. It should be every believer's desire to know God intimately. It should be our desire not to get paid, not to get married, not to do this and not to do that. No, but my number one desire should be to know God intimately. It's on the screen. Yeah, to be able to know God intimately. That should be every believer's desire, that I will know God intimately. Look at Paul said in Philippians 3.10. He said that I may know him. I may know him. Come on. That should be something that you pray about every day. You ought to say, God, I desire to know you. Uh, God, I, it's not about me being on the president's list. It's not about me being on the dean's list. It's not about people, me being in somebody's phone, but God, I want to know you. That's how you ought to be when you come into your trouble. Philippians 3.10 When you come into your trouble, you ought to say God, I may not have done anything to deserve to be in this mess. I did not say anything wrong. I did not do anything wrong. And from my perspective, I feel like it's not right for me to be in what I'm in. But God, show me your presence in there. Show me. I want to see you in this. Come on, that's a big boy word right there. 
there. That's a big boy. That's a big girl word because I'm saying God is not about what I'm going through, but I want to see you because whenever it is that I get in a situation that I can't get myself out of, that sounds like a, a situation for God. That sounds like that where God is ready to stand up. Come on, if you've never been sick, you'll never know he's a healer. If you've never been overwhelmed, you'll never know him as your peace. Come on, if you've never been discomforted, he'll never be your comforter. But God allows us to go through situations that I may know him. And now somebody can't come and take something from you because you say, oh no, I know too much about him. You can't make me doubt him. You should have caught me 10 years ago. But can I tell you, God healed my body. You should have came to me before, but now God brought me out too many times. Oh no, I know for him to be a way maker. I know for him to be a miracle worker. I know for him to be a rod. Come on, I know for him to be my shepherd. I know him to be my Lord because I know too much about I want to know him. Look at somebody say, I want to know him. That's why we serve. That's why we give. That's why we keep showing up because I know him. I know him. I know him. To know him. I told you last week to know him is to arrive at, at a knowledge of someone or something to make acquaintance of, to know. I'm, I'm, I'm fully acquainted with him. Come on. You can't tell me he won't walk with you. You can't tell me he won't walk, talk with you. You can't tell me he won't rock you in the middle of the night. You can't tell me he won't soothe you because I'm fully acquainted. I'm acquainted with him. You know what else? To know I, I, I acquire information about him. How did I how did I acquire information? I learned about him. Oh, Matthew 11, 28, he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. He said, learn of me. Take my yoke upon you. Oh, come on here, somebody. I'm trying to tell you, I learned about the Lord. He has shown me some things. That's how, that's how I know him. That's how I know him. Look, let me keep on going. Let me keep on going because here, to know him is to grasp, to grasp, to grab, to grab something. Paul says, I have not apprehended the things that I've been apprehended for. You were born on purpose and for purpose. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You, 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 your life endeavor should be, God, I want to know why I'm here. One, one writer said the two most important days in the person's life is the day he was born and the day he find out why he was born. I like to say, can I throw a third one in there? Can I covertize it, modernize it, and contemporize it? Can I tell you that there's a day that you were born, the day you find out you were born, and the day you were born again? Come on here. Can I tell you that the day you're born again, and when you find out why you're here, that makes all the difference in the world. Now, because of this postmodern society, that's why there's so much rebellion against institutional authority. That's why folk walk around and say, folk can't tell me nothing. You can't tell me nothing. I, I, I live my life. I do what I want to do. That's why there's no respect for authority. That's why, th that's why there's no discipline of our children. That's why there's no grand narrative because there's no creator. There's no distinction between humans and animals. Everybody got the same right. There's no living or no non-living. There's no male. There's no female. There's no good. There's no evil because we live in a postmodern society. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. So this is why <laughs> we need to know God. <clears throat> When, when, you, when you know God and you study God, of course, I told you last week that um, theology just simply means uh, the study of God. That, that's all that simply means, the study of God. But a lot of things can go under that umbrella when they talk about the study of God. You can talk about uh, Jesus. You can talk about the Holy Spirit. You can talk about angels. You can talk about all these different things fit under that umbrella. But if you just want to study God... That's what the theologians call theology, they call that theology proper, theology proper, which is just simply the doctrine of God. Anybody come to learn something or you just want me to whistle you tell us nursery rhymes? Anybody want to learn something? So, so, I mean, I'm telling you nursery rhymes, if you want, I mean, but, but I, I figure if you come out on a Thursday as tired as you are, come on, it's like, like the way that couch was calling you tonight, come on, I know if you came here, I know at least want to learn, learn something, come on, at least the way that couch was calling, I know that couch was calling you. Look, the doctrine of God, that's what theology proper, that's just studying, it means studying God, the doctrine of God. So, I know I'm not going to just assume that everybody's on the same sheet, the same page, yeah, if we, even when you're talking about doctrine, this means something as well. Doctrine is just simply Christian truth. Christian truth, say that, Christian truth. So, so, so if, I, if, I, if I know God and I understand who God is and I know Christian truth, then here, listen, uh, my, my point is, you can't believe the way you want to believe. No, <laughs> you can't. This is how silly we sound when we talk about, no, this is the way I believe. This is what I want to believe. No, no. You, you know how we sound? If I tell you my name is Kobe, your name not no Kobe. You, 
You can't come to me and tell me what my name is. Come on. Your name not no car. Your name not no net. Come on. You know how offended we'll be? You ain't tell me. That's my mama. I know I live here. And that's how we feel. That's how we sound, brother, when we come about come to the word of God and come about the, the, the truth of God because there's a way, a right way to believe about God. There's a right way to believe about God. I know what I said. There's a right way to believe. You can See, everybody got a theology about who God is. That don't mean it's right. You can be sincere. That don't mean you're right. So doctrine, healthy doctrine, healthy teaching is Christian truth and teaching that is passed on where? From generation to generation. The faith that was delivered to the saints. I told you about Jude. Write this down if you're taking note. Jude 3. Jude said, he, to, he Jude wrote to these individuals, these believers. He said, I, I, was, I was eager to write to you about the common salvation. He said, but I changed my mind. He said, I'm going to write to you now about this faith that was passed down from me all the way down to you. Jude said, I need you to stand firm in what you know. So that's what doctrine is. There's a way to believe about God. There's some things that we say in, in, in Christendom that's, not, that's just simply not true. One thing, and I don't want to bother nobody. I don't want to bother nobody. If y'all don't throw nothing at me, I'll be here next Thursday too. I promise you. One thing is when, when our loved ones pass or loved ones transition, we say, oh, they, they are an angel now. <laughs> now, if you want to believe that, go ahead and believe it. But the thing is, when you run in danger, don't ask me. <laughs> That's where the problem comes in. See, because we don't know it. Nowhere in here, see, we, we turn into angels when we die. I don't mean to bother nobody. I ain't come on, I ain't bothering about grandma. You think grandma an angel? You going on bother. Keep on thinking grandma an angel. If you think grandma is. I mean, I'm just saying. Boy, you can hear you can hear somebody asking for some toilet paper at Dollar Journal. Y'all so quiet. My point, I'm not even giving no more examples because I don't want y'all. I mean, but my point, my point, no, I'm not giving no more examples. My point is, because there's a lot of things we believe about God that's not true. And so and now we're that way in the house of God. How are people on the outside looking in who think they know God and they be blaming God for all this stuff that God don't got nothing to do with? In fact, we be blaming the devil for a lot of stuff he don't got nothing to do with. Oh, y'all have heard that story before. Uh, this person was going to church. They was running to church. They was running late. And the devil was sitting outside on the step. And the devil was sitting there. The man walked past him. He said, man, I think that was the devil. He came back and said, are you the devil? He said, yeah, I'm the devil. The devil was out there crying. He said, man, why you crying? He said, man, because the church and they having testimony service. And they lying on me. I ain't making them people do all that stuff. <laughs> we blame stuff on God. And the devil. <laughs> so my point, what, what's my point? My point I'm trying to make is, you know that was good. Don't shake your head at me. Don't shake your head at me. Look, my point, my point is, is that there's, a, there's things that we believe about God that's not true. Does that make sense, you all? We, there's a right way. You just can't believe about God what you want to believe. That, 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 okay, let me keep going. Y'all ain't coming for this tonight. Y'all ain't coming for this tonight. Y'all just want to just want to rail them and rock them and rock them and shake them like that. Look, so, so what, what doctrine is to teach, it is, it is to receive what is taught. Let me keep on going. Let me keep on going. So, I'm not going to keep going. Y'all read that when you get a chance. That's just another definition of doctrine. So, when we're talking about to know God, uh, Daniel said, they that know their God shall stand firm. And do exploits or do mighty things or take action is what Daniel said. So there are some attributes about God that you and I as a believer should know. There are some things. We have to understand the character and the nature of God. And if you feel like this is, is not important or you feel like this is boring, come on, you don't, you don't know God the way you think you ought to know him. Because there are some things that you ought to know about him. So when you hear all the chatter, you hear all the noise, you hear all of the things that are so upsetting and heart-wrenching, you will, you will say, no, you can't blame that on God. Or it won't even change your perspective about God. The theologians, they say there are some, things, some attributes, they call them incommunicable. In other words, there are some things that only belong to God. It'll make sense in a moment. There are some attributes that, that cannot be communicated to anyone else. Here, these are, these are only found in God. Only found in God. So, so this, these things that we're getting ready to look at here, these are attributes about him. Nothing deep, nothing didactic, but this makes him God. 
In other words, so when I know these attributes and I understand that this is what makes God God, I won't be weary in well-doing. I won't, I won't faint when things get difficult. I won't walk away when things don't go my way. I'll learn how to forgive people even when I don't want to forgive because I have an understanding of the character and the nature of God. Let me, let, me, let me keep on going. Let me keep on going. Let me keep on going. One of the things, I'm, I'm not going to skip over, skip over transcendence. I'll come back to that. Skip over that. Let me, let me go to my first God is. Somebody say God is. God is, God, God is eternal. That, that's what he is. God, God is eternal. At the, you, 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 yeah, at that, but no, that, that's some good stuff right there. Because before there was anything or anybody, there was God. God, God is eternal. Before there was anybody and after everybody gone, they're still going to be God. He is eternal. So in other words, if God is eternal, if God is from everlasting to everlasting, and before there was ever this or that or when or where, if I understand that God is eternal, then this would get me to a point that where else would I look to? Who else would I put my hope in? Why else? Why am I worried about the temporal when I'm serving somebody that's eternal? Why am I worried about the temporary when I'm serving someone that's eternal? Look, look what Isaiah said. Isaiah said in Isaiah 40, 28, he said, have you not known? Have you not heard? What? The Lord is the everlasting God. What is it? The creator. I told the ex nihilo. He created everything, something out of nothing. God is the only one that can make something out of nothing. Isaiah said he's the creator of the ends of the earth. Look at this. He said he does not faint. Or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Isaiah said, don't you know? Have you not heard? What you worried about? You worried about J-E-A? And you serve the eternal God? You worried about somebody that don't like you? And you serve the eternal God? Isaiah said, have you not known? Have you not heard? Oh, my God. Look at, look at Psalm 90. Psalm 90 and 2. It said, before the mountains were brought forth. Or what, 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 what is more what, what, what is more stable than mountains? What, what brings more stability than mountains? And Moses said that before even the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting you, you, you are God. You are God. There's nothing, nothing sneaks up on you. You're God. You got all power in your hand. You're God. If, if, if anybody is stable, if anybody, if, if anything speaks to solidity, if anything speaks to being fortified, if anything speaks to something I can put my trust in, my hope in, come on. Oh, my God. My God is, he's, he's eternal. He's eternal. I see, I see I'm a little more excited than you are. So hopefully by time, somewhere around the middle of this message, preferably a little bit of what's on me, I get on you, but it's okay. I come. I bring my excitement and maybe it'll get off on you a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. God is eternal. I just, I just love the word. I just all it is. Hey, I'm, 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 a, I'm a dinosaur. I'm one of the few folks that still get excited about the word. Look, look. <laughs> we say God is not only eternal, God is immutable. Mm. He's immutable. He's immutable. He's immutable. Well, immutable simply is there, is there on, on your notes. Immutable is the characteristic of experiencing change or development. Mm -hmm. So God does not change. It does not experience change or development. You know how key this is? This is so key because people in an attempt to try to help God, they will say, they'll say something called process theology. That's why it's so important. Y'all be watching these, all these preachers and all these people y'all love. Come on. I'm in, the, I'm in the society of preachers, so I don't throw rocks to the preachers out, but I, being your pastor, being your leader, I will tell you like my mama told me, you better not be eating everybody's food. Come on. Yeah, my, my, my mama told me, you you go around uh, Miss Lulabelle's house and act like you hungry if you want to. I don't care if your stomach uh, sounds like a mountain lion. Come Come on, you better not, you better not come home and you and eat somebody's food. You know why? Because you don't know what people are doing. Maybe a little witch in a little layer somewhere ah, underneath the house of making making some oatmeal. You don't know who made that oatmeal. You don't know those paw print cookies. How they got that paw print so perfect? You don't know what they did. <laughs> better not be eating everybody's food. <laughs> But, but, but what, what am I saying? There are people that believe, hear me real good, and it sounds strange, but they teach it and preach it. But they don't say this, but it's people that believe that God is evolving. There are people that believe that God is coming into himself. 
That's how they explain all the wars and all the, the planes disappearing and tsunamis and all this. They say that God, is, he, and he's evolving. He's coming. He's not as strong as he will be one day. He's not as powerful as he will. They're not going to say that, but that's what they're saying. That's called process theology, but my Bible tells me that God is immutable. Look at Malachi 3, 6. It says, for I, the Lord, do not change. Good God, you, you don't know how happy that is. Come on, you don't know how happy that ought to make you, that God do not change. He's not fickle. Come on, he don't get tired of you and I. He don't like you one day and don't like you the next day. Come on, he's not like us. Come on, we, we'll have a BFF. We'll take a, a selfie with our BFF. And the next thing we do, we block them. We unfollow them. We unfriend them. Come on, here, God not like us. Come on, God, God does not change. God does not, he's not gone with the wind. He's not up and he's not down. But no, the Bible says, for I am the Lord and I do not change. Let me tell you how important this is. The fact that God does not change. Look what it said. Look at the verse. Don't look at me. Look at the verse. It's on the verse. He said, therefore you. He said, because of the fact that I don't change. He said, oh, children of Jacob, you are not consumed. The only reason why you still alive is because God don't change. The only reason why that bullet didn't take you out, that car accident didn't end your life, the only reason why you're still here is because God did not change. If he was fickle like you and I, I would have been gone a long time ago. But God said, I don't change. But no, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. God does not change. That's why I'm still alive. That's why you still know your name, because God don't change. That's why you still know who you are, because God don't change. You've had enough trouble. You have enough trial to make you go cuckoo for cocoa puff. But the fact that God does not change, you still who you are. God is good. Now, I'm just talking about who God is. That's all my who God, God is. I'm not, I can't preach your socks off tonight. It's just, just telling you who, who God is. God is, say God is, self-sufficient. God, God is self-sufficient. There, there are some, <laughs> there are some codependent Christians. Codependent Christians, they sound like this. If he ain't going, I ain't going. Co co codependent Christians, co codependent Christians are, are individuals that, if, if, that when, when pastors say something a little risque, they got to cut their eye at their, cock, their cut partner, their friend, and see if they say amen. If they say amen, then they'll say amen. Oh, that, I'm talking about, oh, y'all act like y'all, uh, y'all y'all don't y'all ain't been in church. I've been saved almost 20 years. I know how this thing go. Can I, can I tell you that there are some codependent. They, they don't praise unless they see somebody else praise. And God, they don't get with it unless they see somebody else get it. Codependent people, they base themselves, they base their actions off someone else's action. Oh, but my God, he's self-sufficient. He's independent. In other words, I can't vote him out because I didn't vote him in. Come on. I can't walk away and say you're no longer God if I stop believing believing in him, he's still God. If I stop serving him, he's still God. Come on, if I say I'll never go to another church, I'll never pray another prayer, I'll never give him another prayer, but I promise you he's still going to get the glory when you ride down the street and lose control of your car. You don't say super supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, you say Jesus. Come on, even if you don't believe in him, you still got to call his name. There we say, he's a God of, he's a God of destiny. Even if you're not his child, he's going to say, say my name. Say my name. He's, 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 he's the God of destiny. That's why I'm his child. That's why I'm a survivor. That's why I don't deal with no scrubs. <laughs> I don't care what you say. I ain't got no bills. Bills, bills. That's, that's four songs. Don't say no three songs. That was four songs in a row. Give me my credit. I said survival, bills, bills, bills. I said no scrubs. Yeah, that was three songs. So look, look what the Bible says. The Bible says they ain't had no more hits. They had broke up by then. Look, look. Look what the Bible says. Poor Kelly. Look, the, the Bible says he, <laughs> he does, <laughs> he does not change. Oh, no, that's not the right point. Anyway, he's self-sufficient. God is independent. <laughs> he's independent. God, listen to this. It's so good. God does not, those four, okay, don't leave, leave me alone. God, God, God said, God, God, listen to me. God does not need us or the rest of creation to affirm his godness. He doesn't need us. But yet he chooses to use us. 
He chooses us to play an active role in the body of Christ. He don't need us. Come on, you think. Some people think because, well, I, I'm mad at God. Or oh, words, I'm, I'm mad at God. I'm mad at the church. I'm mad at the preacher. I ain't going to give nothing. As if you, because you stop tithing, the door is going to close. <laughs> As if the fact that if you stop coming, you stop saying, I ain't doing nothing. As if that's going, as if God going to say, oh, no, please don't do that. Oh, no, please come back. Oh, God, the God is God. Come on here, somebody. If, 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 if what you have is based on people, it doesn't matter if it's your business. It don't matter if it's your marriage. It don't matter if it's your ch- If it's based off or predicated off what a person does or do not do, come on, you're in trouble. But if God told me to do it, come on here. If God initiated, then God going to sustain it. That's come with the local church. That come with my business. That come with my marriage that come with my children, whatever come down the pipe, if God gave it to me, he going to sustain it. Yes, he will. You can't be dependent on folk. Come on, people tell you, I got your back. I can name about 10 people right now. Say, if you ever start a church, just look over your shoulder, honey, and I'll be there. Come on, I looked over my right shoulder. I looked over my left shoulder. I searched all over. I still ain't seen them. I still ain't seen them for. You better, you better let people push you off the cliff talking about they got no. You got to know, did God tell you to do what it is? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching y'all. I'm trying to get y'all this stuff here. Let me go. Look, 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 look at the book says. Look at the book. God is self-sustained. Look at, look at Acts 17, 24. Is this good, y'all? It's good. It's good. I'm so glad they cut that air off. I was so cold. I didn't know what to do. Look, look at Acts 17, 24. It says, it says, the God who made the world and everything in it. Look at this. Being Lord of heaven and earth. Look, look what they say. Does not live in temples made by man. In other words, God don't need us to build him something. If we don't never push this wall out, never push that wall back, if we never acquire a piece of land, if we never build the big building, we never do, God still going to be God. Come on. And he's still going to be good. No, what we do, come on, with the furtherance of the gospel, that don't mean that God comes off the throne. If we, no, let me keep going. Verse 25 says, nor is he served by human hands. Here it is. Look what he says. As though he needed anything. God don't need anything from us. He's self-sufficient. Since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. Yeah, let me go. Y'all read Job and get a chance. God was rebuking Job. And, and Exodus 13, uh, chapter, chapter 3, verse 14, God told Mo, Mo, Mo said, who should I, who, 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 who should I tell you? No, Moses had to see some stuff. He said, who, 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 who should I say? Who should I say sent me? Aaron said, come on, get it out, Moses. He said, I, I am. I tell him I am Th- that I am. Look, that's all that is. God is. You know what else God is? Here, this is a typo. Don't worry about it. They're immutable. Somebody was in my office talking to me, and I told them I was going to, I told them they was going to mess me up. They messed me up. I ain't going to throw them under the bus. They're here. Remember, it was talking to me and made me double tight something right there. So that's a, that's just, that's charge it to the, the person that was talking to me. Look, look at Hebrews 6.18. I ain't going to call them out. Hebrews 6.18. He said, I want to do it so bad, but I'm not. Let's say Hebrews 6.18 says, so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. Look, I'm reading New Living. Look, see Hebrews 6.18. New Living says, so God has given both. Look at this. <clears throat> Let's say this together. God has given, given both his, look, promise and what else? His oath. Be- these two things. God, God has given us his promise and God has given us his oath. These two things. God, God, because God has given us these two things. Look what it says. These two things are what? Unchangeable. Because it is impossible for God to lie. Oh, it's, it's simply impossible for God to lie. If God ever promised you anything, it's going to happen. The key is this word that we got to learn called eventually. Come on. If God said it's going to happen, it's going to eventually happen. But what most people do, most people die in the pro, in the process. You got the, you got the promise, you got the problem, and you got provision. In the middle, I call it the process. God gives us a promise, and then we got the provision. We want the promise, and then walk in the provision but no my friend there's an in-between time there's a process there's gonna be a problem but a lot of people stop halfway and never materialize they never see the manifestation because of the process but if God had promised you anything it's gonna happen I don't care if it take you 25 years it's gonna happen I don't care if you got to move it's gonna happen I don't care what you got to lose it's gonna happen I don't care if you get fired it's gonna happen I don't care if you got to file file 13 it's gonna happen make no difference what it is God said it's gonna happen because he promised it to you let me keep going. 
Read, read, read these other verses and go home. James 1 says, in God, there's no shadow of turning. All this just to support who, who God is. Let me go to the next one. All y'all know this. I know y'all do. God is omnipotent. Mm -hmm. God is omnipotent. We got to understand what this pastor talking about. They that know their God shall stand firm. So if you know who God is, we can't get to the bottom of, bar of the barrel studying God. You'll never be able to fully figure him out. When the brother said in noonday, when the brother said we'll be studying him all our life and even throughout all eternity, we'll never still figure out who God is. But here, having a knowledge of who he is in the earth will help me in the meantime, in between time. Y'all sit up and listen to me. Look, God is omnipotent. What else is he? All powerful. With him, what? Nothing is impossible. Do, 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 do we, we, we say that, but do we believe that? We say that, but do we live this? Then why, if we believe that God is all-powerful, why do we be stressing out so much? Why don't we be like that Shumanite woman that say, it shall, come on, it shall be well. Come on, you got a dead baby. You don't know what's going to happen, but it shall be well. Why don't we get to the point to where we understand that just because it's beyond my reach, it's never beyond his reach. God is all powerful. Jeremiah 32, 20, 32 17, it says, it says, it says, the latter part of the verse is all I want. Nothing is too hard for you. Look at the bottom part. Nothing. It's too hard. Look at 32, 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? Y'all said, no, 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 no. Come on, we sang that. No, no, we, we sang these songs, and he's able and all that. But do we really believe what we sang it? Do we really believe what we be preaching? We put the butter from, from the dough. Oh, let me give you another verse of scripture. I wish I thought about this when I was putting it together. Look at Genesis and make sure this is the right verse. Genesis 18, 14. Uh, yes, sir. 18, 14. It says right here. Write it down. Genesis 18, 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? <laughs> let me hear you. Give me another verse. Y'all still think he's not omnipotent. Let me give you another verse here. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Holy Ghost bringing it back to my memory. Look at Luke chapter 1. That's why you gotta know. That's why you gotta know your Bible here. Look, look. That's why you need you to believe. Look, Luke, 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 one thirty-seven says, "For nothing will be impossible with God." <laughs> Good God. This is that angel talking to young Mary. She trying to say, "How can this be? I've never known a man." He says, "There's nothing shall be impossible with God." Oh, that's some good stuff. He's omnipotent. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. Skip that X and Hilo. I told you that just means he created everything out of nothing. God, God, say God is. Omniscient. Yes, sir. You know that. You learned that in Sunday school. But, but the society trying to snatch this away from us. God, God is, this simply means God is all knowing. He knows all things. Look at this. At all times. Good God. Nothing. You know God never had an aha moment. <laughs> you know nothing ever occurred to God. Come on, that will give us so much confidence the way you come to God and you say, Lord, they said it is over. <laughs> God didn't say, what? Yeah. Come on. You, 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 know, you know how we be talking. They just, shut up. No. God, they said it's stage four. He said, <gasps> come on. God knows everything. And this is the confidence that we ought to have in him. Come on. If, if God knows everything and his, by, his word tells us in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, that he will not allow me to be tempted above measure. If God knows everything and he allows me to experience a thing, that means he's going to walk me through this thing. Preach, boy. If God knew it was going to happen, he knew they were going to walk out. He knew I was going to get that bad news. Nothing ever catch him off guard, even when it knocked the wind out of me, even when I don't understand it, even when I can't fathom it, I can't wrap my mind around it. If God knew about it, he's going to see me through it. Yes, he will. They that know their God they shall be to stand firm. Whew, that's some good stuff. Let me keep going. Let me get here going. He knows. He knows. Proverbs 15, 3 says, the eyes of the Lord are in, in every place, keeping watch over the good and the evil. Hey, you read all that when you get a chance. I don't really read all those verses. All that just speaks to God knows everything. Read those verses. Y'all gonna y'all gonna study some stuff. Y'all, I give y'all a study guide every week, man. Y'all y'all ought to be some some spiritual giants around here. Y'all this all these all these trees we we enslaved for the gospel. But look look, God, God knows everything. Look what else. God is omnipresent. Oh man, y'all know all this stuff, but I'm just trying to trying to tell you he's a, he's he's all present. Look at this. He is unlimited by space or time. He, there's no limitations. 
He can, all of us can be here, come on, serving him and praising him, and he can still he, hear all of our heart, hear all of our requests, and he's still in every other place around the world. He's omnipresent. He's omnipresent. He's omnipresent. How, how, how significant is this? Because I can't watch over my children. I got to go to work. But God can. <laughs> oh, God. I, 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 and, that's, and that's why I don't got to wait for my spouse to go to sleep and sneak in their phone, try to get their hand and try to put their hand on their phone, open up their password, try to hold their head up so they face recognition. I, I don't got to go slipping around, going to nobody's phone. I, I'm so glad. I, I'm so glad me and my wife don't play that mess because, can I say, I'm so glad we don't play that because if, if you're not scared of God, Come on, you can get the bamboozle on me. You can, you can slip past me. There was, uh, <laughs> Elder Campbell tells a story. I talk about Elder Campbell all the time. He tells a story about a guy who was so jealous of his wife. He, 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 when he leave, he, she was a housewife. When he leave, he used, to, he used to rake the dirt. They had no grass. He used to rake the dirt a certain kind of way because he knew when somebody come in there, come on, he'll see the footprint. But he didn't know that she had a rake in the back, and she was raking it back. Come on, she was sliding Bobo in, and she was raking it right back up. Come on here. You know, you know them people. They check the car. When they see how warm it is, come on, you you know them folk when they you tell them you're on your way home, you try to say, well, hold on, there's only three traffic lights and they only hold you at 30 seconds and the wind is blowing at 30 degrees. You should have been here 10 minutes ago. What's his name? <laughs> nobody, come on, help me, sideline preacher. Ain't nobody got time for that. When God is omnipresent, He see everything, and if He want me to know, He gonna He gonna let me know. You keep on looking, you are gonna find something. Keep on looking. Get your little poor heart. Get your little feelings hurt. Keep on looking. Keep on looking. Let me go. I ain't got nothing doing nothing. Let me go. I'm trying to help. Trying to help the people. Trying to help the people here. Trying to help the people. Let me go. <laughs> Look, have I read Acts yet? Acts 17, 27? Okay, let me. It's right here. Acts 17, 27 says, they should seek God and perhaps, you don't know where she is. She got so many papers. Look, it says, she, it says they should seek God and perhaps feel they feel their way towards them, find him. Oh, this is the part I want. Look, look at the bottom part of this verse. Paul is speaking to, before I read it, Paul is speaking to a group of people who are serving all these different idols. They literally have a, they literally have an altar to the unknown God. The unknown God. Paul says to them, you're doing all this trying to find God. He says in the latter part of this verse, he said, yet he's actually not far from each one of us. God is not far. He's right here. When I, when, when I acknowledge him, that's when he manifests himself. Let me keep on going. We, we, we should skip all the verses. Read that when we get a chance. Psalm, Psalm, Psalm. Read all that when we get a chance. Here, we find, we find comfort in knowing that we can't outkick his coverage. The only two of y'all got that. All the only sports people. Y'all, the lady is like, huh? What you mean outkick? The coverage, what coverage, like, 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 my, like my blanket, like my cover, cover, like a quilt? No, that, that's a football term, boo-boo, look. What, what, that that means whenever somebody is kicking, uh, uh, kicking, <laughs> kicking a punt or, kick, or doing a kickoff, they outkick the coverage, meaning that they kick the ball past the individual. I'm out here to try to catch the ball, but they outkick it, and they kick it past me. What am I telling you? I'm saying that I can find comfort because God is omnipresent. I can't kick nothing past past him. Oh, everything. Come on. I can't go so high that I can get around him. I can't go so high I can get over him rather. I can't go so low I can get under him. I can't go so wide I can get around him. But no, God is omnipresent. He's, ev he's everywhere at every time. Let me go. Let me go. I'm done. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. God is. Say God is. God is. Spirit. God, God is spirit. God, God is spirit. Yes, he is. God is spirit. God is spirit. Look, John 4, 24. You know this. God is spirit. Here it is. Because he's spirit, this is the way we ought to worship him. That's why you don't get nothing out of worship. You ought to worship him in spirit and in truth. Because of his spirit, because of his tangible presence, here look what the Bible says. My, 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 my note rather says, we find freedom when we're experiencing God's manifest spirit. We, we find freedom. This, this, is why, this is why worship is so important. This is why knowing who our God, they that know their God shall stand firm and do exploit. So this is why knowing God is spirit and knowing I must worship him in spirit and in truth. This was why knowing this is so important is because in my knowing this, in my following the pattern of who he is, is where I experience my freedom. 
There should be nothing in our lives that have us, listen to me closely, perpetually bound. Come on, look at me. There, there's nothing in our lives that should have us perpetually bound. There's some things that we'll struggle with. As long as you're here, you're going to have a struggle. As long as you're here, you're going to have a struggle. But there's some, thing, there's some things that should not have us perpetually bound. You bound with something for years and for decades, you ain't been in his presence. Somebody lying. Either, either God lying or I'm lying. So I'm, we just said that by two immutable things, he can't lie. Yeah, yeah. Let me go. God, God is. No, let me read that scripture. 2 Corinthians 3, 7. Says, now, now the, the Lord is spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's what? There's freedom. There's freedom. Where well, he said it, where spirit is. So, so God is. Let me go. Let me go. Y'all tired of me. Just trying to help some people. God is living. God is living. So all that's cool <laughs> that he's this and he's that, but what is all of that if, if he ain't going to help me? God is living. And, and Jeremiah talks about all these idols. Read them and get a chance. He talks about all these idols, people making all these idols. They cut their idols. They carry them around. They doing all this stuff. But no, our God is not dead, but he's alive. We live in a society that's trying to tell us that God is dead. We live in a society that's trying to tell us that if God is so good, then where is he when people are getting raped? Where is he when children are being molested? Where is he when helicopters drop out of the sky? Where is God? If God is so alive and so well, he may have been alive one day but he's not up there no more because where is he oh but no when I know who my God is and I know what it is that he does I know his character and his nature I won't let you tell me that God is not living because he's alive he's alive and well y'all gonna read Jeremiah when you get a chance all right y'all just want me to finish you know what I'm saying? yeah look God, because he's living because he's living God is a God of action yes he is he's a God of action He's a God of action. He's going to do something. That's how you ought to live your life, that God's going to do something. He, I, I don't know how he's going to do it. I know he's going to do something. I don't know what he's going to do. He's going to do something. If I've been faithful and, and I'm, leaving, I'm living according to his word and his word say he's going to do something, he's going he to do something. That's how, we all, that's how we all live our lives. Hebrews 10, 31 says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. God's going to do something. Here, all this basic stuff. Y'all got all this basic stuff. God is light. Yes, he is. God is light. This is the message that we've heard from him and proclaimed to you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. In 1 John 1, 5, this is a message that we heard that God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. So if I'm a, if I, if John goes on to say, if I hate my brother, I'm dwelling in darkness. How can I abide in him who is light, but yet I'm in darkness? When in him there's no darkness. This light also depicts God's uh, glory. It depicts who he is. It depicts his presence. God, God is light. God is light. Now, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Read all those other verses, First Timothy and all that. God, God is love. God is love. Y'all know I was going to get that one. God is, God is love. 1 John 4, 8. If anyone who does not love God does not know God. Anyone, any, for anyone who does not love, rather, anyone who does not love does not know God. Why? Because God is love. John says, you hate people, you don't like people. I like you, but I, I, I love you, but I don't like you. All that stuff we be saying. And God says, if anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. Look for John 4, 16. It says, so we have, we have come to know and believe the love that God has for us. Here he tells us again, God is love. God, God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God. And abides in, and abides in him. Let me, let me wind it up. Let me wind it up. God, God is personal. I'm just teaching who God is. That's all I'm doing, trying to teach you who God is, his character and his nature. And see, but before, I, I forgot to say this at noon, David, I, 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 thank, thank, I'm glad it came back to my members now. Listen to me real closely because I told you those are some, there are some attributes that cannot be communicated to us. Remember I said that? Incommunicable is what they call it. It cannot be transferred to us. He's eternal. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. Those things, that's what makes him God. But these, these terminologies right now, the, he expects to see this in us. He's love. 
we ought to have some resemblance. No, we, that he's personal. God is personal. He's not just up there somewhere. He's personal. That's why he told us in his word. That's why he says that when we say, when, when you pray, he say, say, pray like this. Say, our father. How, how much personal is that that I can call him father? This is a term I taught you, and I know I skipped. I'm sorry, the screen people, y'all doing a phenomenal job keeping up with me because I know I'm skipping all over the place. But this is a term that we talked about transcendence, meaning that God is above everything that goes on here. Y'all remember that? But then look at this term again, this eminence. This eminence, it contrasts to transcendence. It doesn't, it doesn't say that God is up there somewhere, but no God, he enters into a personal fellowship with us. That's so powerful. Y'all missed it. God is, he's personal. Say he's personal. So he's not just up there somewhere, but no, he fellowships with you and I. He's present. He's close. He's Emmanuel, which means what? God is who? He's with us. Here, let's keep going. We almost there. God is holy. God is holy. I told you these are some characteristics that should be found in us in, as, in, as, as his people. I intended these last ones already to be filled in, but they, they're not filled in on your people, are they? The, the holiness and all this? They're not? Okay. God is holy. He's holy. So, he says, be ye holy, for I am holy. God is gracious. Mm. Gracious. Ooh, I love this. Look at 1 Peter 5.10. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of some grace, the God of all grace, who has called you into his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore. Because he's gracious, he himself going to restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish. God is merciful. God is. Say, God is. God is. No, God, God is merciful. He's merciful. The Bible says, unto the merciful, they shall obtain. Isn't it amazing when, when I do something and I didn't mean it? I want people to understand I didn't mean it. But then when somebody does something to me, they, they, knew, they knew what they were doing. <laughs> they knew exactly what they were doing. They sitting there telling hard as they can. I didn't see you. That's why they were speaking. I didn't know. I didn't understand. I didn't mean it the way it came across. But, but, but we want mercy. But we, we, don't, we don't like to give mercy. God is compassionate. God is compassionate. Lamentation 3, 22. It is of the Lord's mercies. That we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Somebody say, God is. God is. Come on, put your hands together. Give him some praise, some glory, and some honor. <laughs> 